Hey guys, so for a while I've actually wanted to sit down and do a bit of an in-depth tutorial of how to use Reflow to create a responsive comp. Um, and I found a really great excuse because we now have a, a brand new workflow working with the latest version of Photoshop CC to allow you to import assets from Photoshop and use it as a starting point for your responsive comp. If we look here inside of Reflow, we've got a new Photoshop panel. And this panel uh, actually shows you what Photoshop file you're connected to and a few things that you can do with it. Let's jump over to Photoshop and see exactly how you need to set up your file in order to bring things over to Reflow. So we do have some folders and, and folders are handy, but let's open up some of them. Now you'll notice in some of the layer names here, we've added a file extension. So uh, maybe we'll even zoom in up top so we're looking at some of these images. So we have a YouTube icon, we have a Facebook icon, and we've added a file extension of .png to this, to this layer. So this is actually leveraging the new generator technology in the latest version of Photoshop CC. Anytime you name a layer, a group, or a smart object with an image file extension, Photoshop will actually generate that as an image asset. Now, you'll even notice here, we've got a group, irc.png, and inside of this group, we've got text and we've got a shape. Now, it's actually going to define this entire layer as an image. It's gonna take both of those layers and combine them. Now, if I continue to look through, you'll see we have also shapes and shapes with layer effects. All of those things are gonna translate over to Reflow actually as HTML and CSS. If you're using shapes and say you've applied a stroke, you've applied a gradient overlay, you've applied a drop shadow, those things actually have equivalents inside of CSS and are gonna translate over. So you have two ways of getting your content from Photoshop into Reflow. So if you've installed the latest version of Reflow, most likely that will have installed the Photoshop Reflow plugin and if you go to File, Generate, you'll see the Edge Reflow Project option. And if you don't see that, and you're running the latest version of both, if you go to html.adobe.com, you can actually download the plugin standalone and just install it to get the same functionality. But most likely, if you've installed Reflow, you'll have this plugin. So here we go. I'm gonna click uh, Generate Edge Reflow Project. And if I come back to Finder, you're gonna see my brackets IO PSD, and a folder shows up. And inside of my Reflow project folder, you're gonna see all of those assets that I defined in my layers. You know, we can look through, looks cool. It also generated a brackets IO .rflw, or a Reflow project file. Now if I click on this, it's gonna open up Reflow and load this file. So here you can see we used Myriad Pro. Myriad Pro doesn't exist as an Edge web font, but it may exist in a Typekit kit that you would have created. In this field, you can add your Typekit ID, and that's gonna add all the fonts that you added to that kit to our dropdown. But you'll notice here we have Source Sans Pro. Now Source Sans Pro is an open source font that is actually part of the Edge web fonts. And we saw that in the design, and we've made that available. So I'm actually just gonna map Myriad Pro to Source Sans Pro. If I wanted to browse some other fonts, I could choose this button and browse all of the Edge web fonts. But we're gonna stick with just Source Sans Pro. So we'll hit OK. Now what it's gonna do is take all of the absolute positions of your images and your content and create a starting point for your responsive comp. It will take the content, it'll take the shapes, and it'll take the images and create a, a layout for you. Now this is very much just a starting point for you to create your designs. Uh, we've, we've pulled in all of this content, but there's still a lot of work to do. You need to add some hierarchy to your page. Hierarchy is key. Uh, everything is relatively positioned. Here you can see if I select this text, it's 109 pixels from the top, and it's 11% from the left. And if I look at my styling panel, you'll see this is fully editable HTML text. We've carried over the sizing, the color, all of the attributes that you define inside of Photoshop over into Reflow. 
But again, this is just a starting point and you need to add some hierarchy. You also need to clean up some of the assets. During the conversion, especially with desktop fonts to web fonts, some information is different and we need to account for that. So let's start up here at the top. Going to realign some of this stuff. I'm going to select them. If you hit Command R, that's actually going to wrap your content in a div. So here I can see I created a box and that's going to be its parent. Here we've got a bunch of individual assets. I'm just going to select these guys, hit R again, and this is going to group your content. Now this text is, is a little crazy, so we need to resize it a bit. I'm just going to drag it out. Here we go. That's, that's a bit more of what we were looking for. And, and this is our, our download button. Let's, uh, let's make it a bit bigger. And here, as I was talking about the, the line height that sometimes gets carried across from desktop fonts to web fonts, I'm just going to default this back to normal. And same thing here with this text. I'm going to select both, come back to layout, and I'm going to make the, the width auto. So this is going to make everything the width of the text. So let's just, here we go. Drag it around a bit. Here we go. Okay. Um, now I, I want to group this text with the button because that's the same vertical grouping. We're going to create a column inside of this top header bar. And we'll group. So now we essentially have, we have the image over here on our left and we have this, this other group at the right. And you can see now they are relative to each other. So let's actually do the same thing here. I'm going to take some of the text. We'll place it underneath the images. Let's see, here we go. And let's start grouping these guys. Cool. So now let's move down to these two text blocks. You can see the text is pushing into our bottom area, but that's just because it's, it's a little too narrow. So let's make it a bit wider, maybe align it to our grid. There we go. And this image is most likely something that we want to be the background image to this top container. So I'm going to go ahead and delete it and we'll make it a background image in just a minute. Okay, so let's find these guys, wrap them again, wrap them again. So here we go, we, we now have uh, all of this, this relative content to each other. I'm gonna do one more set down here at the bottom, and uh, again, I think stretch some of this content out. Here we go. Perfect. Awesome. So now that we have this content grouped, actually I think these guys, so you can see these were shapes that were defined uh, inside of Photoshop. We had a gradient overlay, and it has carried through the gradient that we defined inside of Photoshop. But let's, uh, let's see, we're, we're at 93%. Let's actually make that 100% of the canvas. And this, let's just move over, zero out its margins, and make 100%. Okay, so now we've got some rough grouping in here. And if we start to do a little resizing at this point, you know, things are behaving a little funny, but this is only the beginnings of our, our responsive design. Now, if we expand back out, we can start to look at, at these individual pieces of content and figure out how we want their resizing behaviors to be. Now, this button may be a little large for my content. You may want to nudge things around. And if I, if I size him down a little bit, 
um, you'll see that he's 69% of the parent container. Uh, now this may be the explicit size, the width that I want this button to be. And I can very easily set that by this little down arrow and choose pixels. And Reflow will, will do the conversion to map the percentage width to the ultimate pixel width. And so now when I resize, that element is not gonna resize anymore. And that may be the, the behavior that I want here in this box. So again, we can switch this to pixels. Now if I do want some resizing behavior, but not tons, I can use my min and max width of these containers to say, uh, you know, resize some, but not too much. So there's actually a couple of other really cool things that our connection with Photoshop allows us to do. So if I open up our panel again, you'll see we are still connected to brackets io.psd, but we also have a switch down here at the bottom called Photoshop Sync. And this enables, as you can see, live asset updates. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And if I come back to Photoshop, here's, uh, here's our little hero image. And I'm gonna do some terrible design for you. Uh, you'll see we do have a couple of layer effects applied but what I'm gonna do is add an awful color overlay. And you can see the, the red appeared in the background. I'm gonna pull that back just a little bit and say, okay. So now we've got a, a strange red blob. And if I come back to Reflow, you'll see here we've got our assets panel and it's got a little exclamation point. And so what this is telling us is that there's a new asset available for Reflow. So I'm gonna open up the panel and you'll see all the assets that came over during that import process. And I'm gonna scroll down to find hero.png and you'll notice we have a little refresh icon. And if I click on it, you'll see that it just pulls over that icon. Uh, it's, it's very simple to get changes that were done inside of Photoshop into Reflow. So if I come back to Photoshop, I'm like, oh, what do you know? A, red hero image is terrible. I'm just gonna undo. And I jump back to Reflow, get the same update, get the same refresh, and, and we're back to what we were doing. Now, obviously you're not going to put a big red icon as your hero image, uh, but this definitely allows you to have some of that creative control and using Photoshop for what it's best at in manipulating images and then using Reflow for what it's best at in creating web layouts and creating designs for the web. So I'm gonna do some work here and actually make this design responsive. So I'll, I'll meet you back here in just a second and we'll see how it all goes. So this was just a quick overview of taking some assets from Photoshop, bringing them over into Reflow, uh, and starting to create a responsive comp. Obviously this is a very simple design. I mean, this is even a very early design of, of Brackets homepage. But you could see how a design like this could translate to hopefully something you would do, and hopefully a way that, that Reflow, even in its early form, could be helpful. We are very early in our development, and your feedback is actually extremely important. So check out html.adobe.com to find out more about Reflow, and, and especially this workflow with Photoshop. If you run into some bugs, please log some issues at our GitHub page. And uh, if you want to have some conversations with some other folks, check out our forums. Thanks a lot for learning a little bit more about Reflow and seeing this new workflow.